Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to, uh, to my talk. Uh, my name is Hai Chin Ling. I'm an associate professor uh, of University of Buffalo. I'd like to thank the organizer to invite, to, uh, invite me to give this talk. And more importantly, uh, I'd like to thank the Committee of Innovation Award of ASCH Separation Division uh, to, uh, uh, to give me this award. And uh, I want to thank many uh, colleagues that I work with, uh, Professor Benny Freeman at University of Texas at Austin, uh, Dr. Richard Baker, Hans Weinman, and Tim Merkel of Membrane Technology Research Inc. or MTR. Uh, I'd like to thank them for a uh, long time mentoring uh, and also uh, the support for my work. I'd like to thank the University of Buffalo uh, for take, uh, taking me and also give me the opportunity uh, for me to work with uh, many, many fantastic uh, energetic students. So what I'd like to do today is to share with you uh, one of the efforts we've been taking, let's to look at membranes for high temperature hydrogen over CO2 separation. And this is important because uh, the avail av availability of these membranes can uh, reduce the cost of hydrogen production and also enable the CO2 capture so we can make uh, green hydrogen. Uh, secondly, this application is actually quite different from conventional membrane application. It actually requires a high temperature, 150 degrees C to 300 degrees C. Uh, conventional membranes are often at between 20 degrees C to 40 degrees C. So it, it, it's a relatively new application and also require a uh, certain unique property for materials to achieve this uh, property. And I'd like to share with you three approaches that we've been taking the first one is to, uh, to dope this uh, polybenzimidazole PBI, one of the leading polymers for this application with acids. And by cross-linking, we could increase the selectivity. We also take this uh, carbonization to make carbon molecule sieves to enhance both permeability and selectivity. And the third one is we add pradian nanoparticles in polymer matrix to increase the solubility of hydrogen. And I hope that uh, you will like this. And this works uh, supported by NSF and also DOE. Now membranes have been examined for hydrogen over CO2 separation. This is an example uh, process design provided by MTR. We have a membrane here, the syngas that contain hydrogen and CO2 coming in. And this membrane at high temperature can allow hydrogen to go through but then reject CO2. Uh, the reject CO2 can be concentrated, further concentrated, liquefied to make liquid CO2 for utilization or sequestration. The hydrogen can be used uh, for turbine application for other chemical uses. MTR also performed this economic analysis and shows that membranes could be actually very competitive uh, compared with the leading technology such as Selexo. And this one shows the cost of electricity generation because of CO2 capture and as function of membrane or hydrogen permeance and also hydrogen over CO2 selectivity. I'm not gonna go into the details about a specific target, uh, just saying that membranes with high selectivity and high permeance will make the process more economic and then uh, enable the hydrogen production and also the CO2 ca uh, capture. Now let's look at the fundamentals. As I mentioned, this is a relative new applications. Uh, and when we look at this uh, uh, hydrogen CO2 separation, and we know that permeability is a combination of solubility and diffusion coefficient, and selectivity is a combination of solubility selectivity and diffusivity selectivity. Hydrogen is less condensable than CO2, so solubility selectivity is going to be less than one. On the other hand, hydrogen is smaller than CO2. So diffusivity selectivity, it's always favorable. So the key approach that people are taking nowadays is try to enhance the side saving ability. So this one shows Robinson's upper bound plot and it's, it's a selectivity versus hydrogen permeability. And this line is upper bound showing the highest selectivity we can achieve for every possible hydrogen permeability. Conventional polymers will be here that shows low selectivity and if we take a PBI, this is a leading polymer used for hydrogen CO2 separation. 
it has benzene ring with a pi pi a stacking and also a mean functional group that allow hydrogen bond. So it has a very strong side savability. As you can see here, now we can actually increase the hydrogen of CO2 selectivity. On the other hand, we actually have a trade-off that permeability decrease. It's closer to upper bound, but the, the performance can still be improved to make a membrane to be more competitive for this application. So the first step we took is to ask ourselves, can we further increase the side saving ability of this polymer? And with a mean group, so it's very really natural we can in introduce acid group, this uh, poly pro uh, protetic, uh, poly uh, protic acids, acid with multi protons. And what we hope this one is, this acids, they have small molecules and also multi acid functional group. So they could basically cross linked PBI through a mean group or for hydrogen bonds, so make a polymer chains more compact. And this is an example we show is XRD patterns. As we increase the acid content indicated by X value, so X is the molar ratio of acid to the PBI repeating unit. As we increase this, and we're seeing the shift of the peak to the right side, which means we are lowering the despacing in polymer chains. So pure PBI has despacing of four Amstron and the acid has a 3.6 Amstron. So this might seem to be a small number, but in fact, the difference between hydrogen and CO2 kinetic diameter is only uh, is between 2.89 and 3.3. Uh, so it's only uh, 0.41 Amstron. And this is basically the, the, the difference in 0.4 Amstron should be able to make a big difference in the side saving ability. This slide shows the effect of the acid doping level on the gas transport properties. The left one shows the hydrogen and CO2 permeability at 150 degrees C. The permeability decreased with increasing doping level. So this is not surprising because we are uh, basically decreasing the free volume of the polymer system because of the, this uh, acid doping. On the other hand, we see this dramatically increased hydrogen over CO2 selectivity, basically from 16 to about 140 selectivity. And I'd like to mention 140, it's one of the highest selectivity reported for polymeric materials. And this results, again, is not surprising. We can actually explain the behavior 10 times increase in selectivity with a simple free volume model. So we could calculate the fractional free volume for this acid doped polymer. Uh, and then we could correlate with hydrogen permeability, CO2 permeability, and also with hydrogen or CO2 selectivity. As you can see, this change can be satisfactorily described using this model. Uh, secondly, we like to compare this acid doped polymers with the upper bond. And as you can see, this one is 150 degrees C upper bound. The PVI is here as we increase phosphoric acid doping level, we see the consistent decrease in permeability, but then also increase in selectivity. We also look at sulfuric acid and we more or less show similar trend. Again, uh, this uh, study shows that cross-linking can increase selectivity and the sacrifice of permeability. And which is not necessarily we want. We, what we want to see here is, can we improve both? Because lower permeability means lower productivity and then higher cost of membrane uh, system. So carbon molecule sieve is actually an effective way to manipulate the free volume, the distribution and also size in the polymer system. So we take a, it's a simple approach. We look at poly PBI and we try to carbonize at different temperature from 500 degrees C to 900 degrees C. And we measure the permeability at different temperatures. Here we show 100 degrees C. And let me just show this a schematic, sort of showing that uh, by pyrolysis or carbonization at 600 to 900 degrees C, we could create this uh, cavity or also we could in, uh, introduce this ultra micropolis channel. So we could potentially get both high, higher side saving ability, higher side saving ability and also higher free volume and also higher permeability. So now, now let's look at the results. So when we look at PBI here, as we start to increase carbonization temperature, we increase 
the permeability, not surprising. With up to 700 degrees C carbonization, we have a slight decrease in selectivity. As we further increase the carbonization temperature, we actually see the decrease in permeability, which is accompanied by significant increase in selectivity. So the carbonization at 90 degrees C actually shows much higher permeability, well, much higher selectivity, and also higher permeability than the PBI. On the other hand, this higher temperature is still quite challenging for us, right? Because we don't want to operate, you know, we don't want to process the polymer materials at 90 degrees C. So what we're trying to see here is can we combine this PBI and acid doping and also carbonization? Can we optimize this condition to achieve this optimized permeability and selectivity? So this left figure shows the effect of the doping level on the hydrogen CO2 separation property in these carbonized samples. So we carbonize this material at 600 degrees C, the temperature <clears throat> which is easier for us to process compared uh, than the 900 degrees C carbonization. So we change the doping level from zero, which is pure PBI, to 0.23 doping level. And we measure the gas permeability and selectivity at 150 degrees C. As you can see here, increasing the doping level, increase the permeability, but also, but then let's decrease the hydrogen permeability. We could also take one of the samples, this 0.11 doping level, and, and we look at like, can we change the carbonization temperature? How would that do to the hydrogen over CO2 separation properties? Uh, the right figure again shows this effect in this lobinous upper bound plot. We start from if we carbonize at 500 degrees C and then we change to 600 degrees C, 700 degrees C, you see a consistent increase of both permeability and selectivity as we increase the carbonization temperature. At 700 degrees C, we're able to get the selectivity of more than 70 and also permeability of more than 200 balance. And again, this is a uh, you know, one of the best properties we have seen in the literature. The other approach we're looking at here is, so we've been talking about how to increase the side saving ability or how to manipulate the free volume, trying to improve both permeability and selectivity. And both of those, both, those, both approach were actually based on the diffusion coefficient. The other we're looking at is, can we actually do something about the solubility, right? And palladium is well known to have a strong interaction with hydrogen. So polymers have very, very low hydrogen sorption. If you look at a palladium, it has all those, all those many to higher hydrogen sorption than polymers. So our idea is very simple. Can we introduce palladium nanoparticles inside the PBI? And if we could have sufficiently high content of particles, the hydrogen may be able to hop between these particles and we can achieve facility transport of hydrogen. So we prepare nanoparticles between three to five nanometers, and then we could disperse in the polymer. And this is the TEM results. Uh, so these are dark points showing the particles, right? As you can see here. Now we still have a few aggregation, about a hundred nanometers or so, but we can still see so many Nano, small nanoparticles here, anywhere less than 10 nanometer, indicating that most of particles can actually be well dispersed inside the polymer matrix. And one reason is that we have PBI has a main group which can interact with the particle and improve the dispersion. We measure gas sorption in this mixed matrix material, or we call it nanocomposites. As we expect, CO2 sorption in nanocomposites decrease with increasing palladium loading. And here's 50A is 50A weight percent, 12 volume percent. On the other hand, we see consistent increase of hydrogen sorption as we increase palladium loading. Again, this is not surprising. If you look at, uh, compare the hydrogen over CO2 solubility selectivity, uh, the addition of palladium particle can significantly increase the hydrogen over CO2 selectivity. It's all those magnitude increase. We measure the mixed gas permeability as function of palladium loading as we increase palladium loading, 
we actually increase hydrogen permeability and also we decrease CO2 permeability. Again, uh, palladium particles are not accessible for CO2 sorption, so they will hamper CO2 sorption and diffusion. And we see increase of both hydrogen over CO2 selectivity. Just to summarize, show that uh, adding palladium particles can actually increase both hydrogen permeability and also hydrogen over CO2 selectivity. I want to quickly summarize to show that we have tried three approaches, acid doping, carbonization, and palladium particles doping. And all these approaches were able to improve one or both hydrogen uh, property, including hydrogen permeability and hydrogen over CO2 selectivity. With this, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Again, I'd like to thank the ARCH separation division and many, many of my colleagues uh, for a long, uh, long time collaboration.